love letters. Love letters to Kelly. Dear Kelly, you are the love expert. I am. I've written this letter and erased it probably 10 times now because I am horrible at expressing my feelings. I'm one of those people that just can't say no. I do for everyone in my family, and most of my family shows their appreciation. My husband, however, does not. I am treated like an errand runner and not a wife. I don't have a partner. I have a micromanager. He thinks that since he makes more money than me and he works 60 hours a week and I only work 20 hours a week, that I don't work as hard. But when I'm not at work, I'm doing absolutely everything for our family. I'm so tired. I'm stressed. I'm burnt out. I want my husband to appreciate me. I want him to appreciate everything I do for our family and stop treating me like a child and treat me like an equal partner. How do I get him to see me and my feelings when I can't get them out? I can't speak and write letters, and they all sound so dumb to me. Please help. I just want to be treated like an equal here. Tired of crying alone in the bathroom. Well, here's the problem. If you haven't told him how, you know, we all think that, What's the classic fight? What are you mad about, honey? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, I don't nothing. But there is there is something there. And if you haven't told him, maybe he has no clue. You just fall into this rhythm where you always take care of everything. So he just like that that he just grown to expect it. It doesn't make him a bad person. It's just the rhythm your relationship has gotten into. He sounds oblivious. Yeah. Now I used to say the same thing. Like I'd spend all day ironing back in the day. For, for another person in my life. And at the end of all that iron for hours, I'd finally give up and like two or three shirts left. Of course, those are the two or three that he needed. And, I, and I'd be like, you didn't even appreciate me for what I did. Right. You know? But but I enjoy doing for people I love. And that's maybe your love language. We all, I always go back to love languages. Your love language is yeah. doing, doing, doing for someone. His love language might be that he provides for you and he thinks he's showing you when you just want to hear. I don't hear that. I know you're tired, but it sounds like you just want to hear thank you. You want to be acknowledged. You want to be acknowledged. Yeah. And that's the conversation you have to have. And sometimes you have these conversations and you could come from the place of love and say you know i just want you to know that i'm just i'm just kind of feeling burned out and i feel like i do all this stuff for the family and nobody's acknowledging me and it'd be just really nice to hear you know thank you every once in a while and you know maybe and if he reacts defensively and stuff that's 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 tough that's not cool but maybe he just doesn't even realize it so give him a chance set him up to succeed you could, you know, be be mad at him all day, but sometimes men are just really that oblivious. And, yeah. and, and fellas, let this be a lesson thank to you. Thank you, ladies. Yeah, yeah. Hey, baby, thank you. You really did whatever it is. You did that well. But also, thank you for doing it. We've yeah. all we've all been I've done it. a culprit. I've done it. I've done it. But also, yeah. if it's too much for you, ask for help. Say, honey, I'm I'm drowning here with all that I've got going on. I know it's just 20 hours. You think it's just 20 hours a week I work, but that on top of everything. Can maybe we get a housekeeper to come in once every couple weeks to just help me out? Yeah. And or sometimes, that might be something. As a dude speaking, sometimes we need to be told, like, hey, I need help with this because, we're, we're again, we're oblivious. So if you say, hey, can you help me with the dishes today? I'm just so burnt out, and I know you worked 60 hours this week, but can you help me? He's probably going to do it, you know? Yeah. And plus, it's also time, you know, a certain age, too, the kids can start having, yes, you know, helping out, too. So, I mean, we've got to, we can't, we can sit around and be upset that everybody doesn't appreciate, appreciate it and stuff. But if you don't voice it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's My wife sent me a meme the other day that said, it's funny how guys just automat- just say, uh, I'm out of toothpaste, and then a, some toothpaste miraculously uh, appears. Right, yeah, yeah, right. 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 exactly. Right. 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 Like, uh, I love you, babe. Thanks. Mm. Love letters. Love letters to Kelly. Dear Kelly, you are the love expert. I am. Uh, This is the aforementioned letter number one. I have been with my boyfriend two years, living together for a little over one year. I thought I had found the one. He makes me so happy. He's my person. Laundry is amazing as well. We We both had bad relationships in the past, both recently divorced also. In the beginning, I explained that I did not like him talking to other women specifically women that are single. He said he understood. I thought that was the end of it. I saw him commenting on a woman's post and TikTok, and I expressed how it made me feel and that I would like for him to stop. He understood again, got rid of TikTok, (laughs) immediately said the deleting, he was deleting his Snapchat as well. Oh, well, a few months later, I found him texting a woman. He said it was just a meaningless conversation, just jokes and laughs. I asked him not to do it anymore because of how I felt. He said, he understood. He stopped. The beginning of January, I received a Facebook message from a different woman asking how long he and I had been together and that they had met while he, while we were together and had been talking on and off for roughly eight months. 
and done other things together as well. She apparently knows the woman that I found him texting, and that woman messaged me saying they met while I was with him, and they had done laundry as well. All the while, he's sending money to another woman and seeing her too. He Whoa. said he's sorry. That was the biggest mistake of his life, and that he would only wants me and no one else. Kelly. Yeah. Am I an idiot? <laughs> <laughs> they am wrote I an, that? Am I an idiot for not leaving the first time? We live together. I'm in his kids' lives, and he's in my child's life as well. I don't know what to do, Rachel. Aww. Well, you weren't you weren't an idiot. You believed it after not leaving the first time. But the second time, maybe. You weren't an idiot after not leaving the first time. But the second time. Just leave it at that, Al. Oh, okay. She's in. I'm trying you to weren't understand. an idiot after not leaving the first time. I do not like calling names like that. That's very mean. But you called yourself that. But I'm just saying, girl. You got your kids involved, and you're going to have a million excuses, and it's easier than you think, oh, I don't want to have to get out there and find somebody again. But you're going to keep putting up with this? You got a not good guy. I mean, come on. You just, your picker was off. You picked bad. Yeah. And, you know, and next time, maybe some of the things, maybe you can look at this as a learning experience. Maybe I leaped a little too soon into cohabitating with someone. Maybe I I introduced my child to a new man a little too soon. Maybe I should wait next time to make sure he's not a cheater who lies and sends money. I mean, what are you staying for? I don't, he, he just says whatever you need to hear to get past the fight. That's all he's been doing for mm-hmm. a year or two now. He says what you need to hear to get past the fight. Says and then he, he just understood. goes, and he you stopped. accept it. And he's like, cool, dodge that bullet. And he goes and do, does something else. And then what happens? You get mad. You demand all these things. Rightfully so. Um, but, yeah. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm saying it. It's over. Okay. If you're asking me yeah, if yeah. you're an idiot to stay, I'm just saying you. If you were an idiot not to leave after the first time, no. I think some people do screw up, especially early on in a relationship. Yeah. It's like, you know what? You're right. That not that's bad. stupid. That's a you know I shouldn't be messaging this woman. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do that anymore. And then if a man goes on and doesn't do it anymore, great. But so I, I don't think you were an idiot not to leave after the first time. It's the repeat offenses. He showed you who he was. Yeah. Love letters. Love letters to Kelly. Dear Kelly, you are the love expert. I am. I went through a tough breakup about a year and a half ago, and I've spent this time working on myself, and now I have signed up for Hinge. I'm conventionally attractive, but I do have bad anxiety that comes across as resting bee face, and this, (laughs) this makes it really hard to meet anyone in person. My problem is that every time I match with someone and we start talking to the point to scheduling a date, I freak out and I ghost. I've ghosted so many men at this point that I should just turn into a ghost. I've never actually stood anyone up or anything, but as soon as it gets to the point of meeting, I either completely lose interest or I get the ick from something that they say or they do. I'm about to turn 28, and I know that's not old, but to my southern parents, I should have been married years ago, (laughs) and I'm practically already an old maid. (laughs) I do enjoy being alone for the most part, so it doesn't really bother me, but I would like to have someone at some point. Do you think that I'm just not ready yet, and that's why I keep ghosting? Could it be because of my anxiety, or maybe just not ready for a relationship again? I can't ask my therapist because I ghosted her as well. Oh, my Aww. goodness. Find <laughs> <laughs> another one. Is there a way I can get past this? Because I have probably done this to, to a couple of good guys. I know that you had a great time with it, so how can I make this fun and actually start going on dates? Well, girl, I mean, I can't. If you're ghosting, you're, what am I going to tell you that your therapist didn't tell you? I don't know. I mean, you're you just apparently, you need to do some more work on yourself. If it, eventually, you just got to put yourself out there. But... I would set myself up on dates that are maybe not at night since you're you're so anxiety ridden. Make it a lunch date. That way it's got right. like a built in end. Like I got to get back to work. It was so nice meeting you. Or it could be that, you know what? Um, I'm really looking forward to meeting you. I've I've got some uh, a work function. Maybe we can meet for a real quick drink or something you know and then it could be yeah. like i'm out. blowing off the meeting later let's just you know, it's going yeah. so great but you got to put yourself out there and if you're not ready at 28 that's fine you, you got some time left i tried online dating and i was so paranoid about it i th- online dating has got nobody blinks twice at it anymore it's no, so acceptable no. mm-hmm. yeah. but i was embarrassed that uh, I had yeah, to do China, online dating China. because I think I'm so great. I'm freaking Kelly Raspberry. And I, why isn't I'm, I men should be coming up to me. And yeah. it wasn't like that when I would go out. So I used it as a show bit. I'm going to ah. go online dating and I'm going to be able to say, if it doesn't work out, it was just a bit for the show. Anna. It's a good story. And then, a bit. Hello, it's I'm Alan. Story. Boom. And I happened to meet some really great guys. 
And then when that that first relationship that I thought was good fizzled out, I I was like, I'm not ready to get back out there. You have to wait till your heart's right and your mind. You have to wait till your mind is right. Your heart can be ready, but your mind's not. Mm. Because if you go when you're not ready, it's not going to work for you. You're going to try two or three days and like (sighs) online dating doesn't work. Well, it does. Mm. There are some really nice people out there. They're not all out there trying to get in your pants. And some of them are. You just got to be careful with your your weeding out process. And but eventually, you got to pull the trigger. Go. I'll, I'll say this also, Kelly. I find you conventionally attractive. Thank you. Sure. Nice. I appreciate love it. letters. Love letters to Kelly. Dear Kelly, you are the love expert. I am. I am so annoyed with my coworker. Uh-oh. She complains about her so-called problems, but from anyone's perspective, she doesn't have any real problems. <laughs> I try to let her vent in the morning before work, but I know releasing some of that stress can help. I ask her follow-up questions, ask her about her life, her boyfriend, etc. But Kelly, she never asked me about me. Oh, no. Mm. Never once will she ask how my weekend was, how I was doing after my father passed away. Nothing. I am so tired of it. I feel like this is all take and no give. I started not to ask her about her life now. I don't see the point. She still cries to other coworkers about her small problems in life. <laughs> and then it makes me feel bad that I'm no longer trying to help her resolve her issues. <laughs> Does this make me a bad person? Um, no. no. <laughs> I mean, you flat out, she doesn't want help. She just wants to be, she just wants, she wants people to thrive off of the drama, you know, yeah. and she's, she doesn't want a solution. She just wants somebody to listen she's to her. She's a venter. So you're just going to have to figure out how to put the earmuffs on when she starts doing it. You're just lucky that she went off to give advice to somebody else. I mean, to, to. Vent. Not give advice to complain to somebody else. Um, I know you want to fix things. You want to be the, the the good friend and stuff. But just be thankful she's moved on to somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what do you, what is she? That's what it. is she even asking? Is me? she a bad person? No, no. not a bad person. You're, not a You're bad fine. Person. Everything's good.